morning, everyone. Welcome to our Sunday morning virtual service here at the North Hollywood Church of Religious Science. We're so glad that you've joined us either on Facebook Live or Zoom. Let's begin with our opening chant, God is all there is. join together in knowing that truth in prayer. So I invite you to just get still, turn your awareness inward. As we recognize beyond our physical senses, that oneness of all life. Because truly, Everything is interconnected on the unseen side of life, in the one life, the one power, the one infinite love, joy, wholeness, abundance, and creativity that God is. Everything is created out of the nature of God, and God's nature lies at the center of everything and everyone, including me, including each and every person gathered this morning for this service. I absolutely know that God, being all there is, God is present and unfolding throughout our time together. We feel that calling of the divine for greater knowingness and experience of itself through us. And I know that this service supports that intention, that we awaken to that presence within each of us as we feel that vibration of love that allows us to feel our interconnectedness I know it is that love of spirit that inspires each and every person who is of service this morning. I know that God is flowing through the music today, through Sam, through our soloist Margaret, through Dean who leads us in our chants. And I know that the message that we have all come to hear to awaken to that divine nature within is spoken through Dr. Mark this morning. I know that he is that vessel through which we hear exactly what we all have come to hear. And I know that out of this time together, much healing and revealing occurs. And so I'm giving thanks right here, right now for all the blessings we receive throughout this service, knowing it's all coming from God. I say, thank you, God. And I release this word knowing it is already done. And so it is, and together we say, Amen. It is glorious to feel the Holy Spirit deep within, ever present and more constant than the sun. Glorious to feel God's presence filling me with love, 
and glorious to know that we are one. It is glorious to feel the Holy Spirit deep within, ever present and more constant than the sun. Glorious to feel God's presence filling me with love, and glorious to know that we are one. It is glorious to feel the Holy Spirit deep within, ever present and more constant than the sun. Glorious to feel God's presence filling me with love, and glorious to know that we are one. And so now, please join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And so now let's join in our congregational song. Joy and peace in my heart, always I feel. Joy and peace in my mind, God within reveal. Joy and peace in my life, I am healed. I am one with God, I know the truth. I am one with creation and one with you. There is no separation between all that is. I am one. Joy and peace in my heart. Always I feel joy and peace in my mind. God within revealed joy and peace in my life, I am here. Spirit dwells within me, guides all I do. It infuses my life with the life I am new. I am rich with abundance of all that is good. All is good, joy and peace in my heart, always I feel joy and peace in my mind, God within revealed, joy and peace in my life, I am So this is a time when we give ourselves the gift of just getting still and communing with that presence within. And so for the next five minutes, I invite you to just get still in your bodies, to sit up, to close your eyes, and to turn your attention inward, and to silently repeat the phrase, God is the love that I am. God is the love that I am. That's the mantra that we use. Silently repeat that over and over again, and I'll bring us out of meditation in five minutes.
Go out of your body, out of this space. Go out of the atmosphere, out of the galaxy. Go out of this universe. And when you're there, take a look backwards and tell me if you still care about all your troubles and how big they are. Can you still see them gazing at them so far away from reality as you define it? It's all just an energy. You may need to realign it because nobody gets to dance for you. Nobody makes your dreams come true. But Larger than pain, you're wiser than worry, more powerful than circumstance. Admit that you're infinite, you can't get it done. This life's but a moment, and you will go on and on. Those things that you're reaching for, they need your belief. Stir up your faith just a bit, they're waiting to be received. Cause nobody gets to dance for you. Perceive it's what you believe the colors the day you're bringing. It's there in your hand, it's at your command. Why wouldn't you wake up singing? Nobody gets to dance for you, nobody makes your dreams come true. But you get to, yes, you get to, and nobody. Your dreams come true, but you get to, yes, you get to, and nobody's gonna light the way, nobody brings a brighter day, but you get to, yes, you get to, oh, All right, thank you, Margaret Owens. Good morning. Morning, welcome to Virtual Church. It's good to have you here. Well, a lot of water's gone under the bridge since I've seen you last, it seems. You know, Ernest Holmes used to have a radio show called This Thing Called Life, and in it, he would say that a, there is a power at the center of your being, and that power is life itself. So he often referred to God or spirit or the divine mind as life. Um, it's up to us to uncover this power, to make it a reality in our experience of life. And so science of mind teaches us again and again that tomorrow will be the outcome of what you think today. So this is great for all of us to think, okay, what am I thinking today? Because that's the tomorrow I'm gonna get. Now, if I were really psychic, and I'm not, I'm not the least bit psychic, I do not have that gift at all. But if I were, I would say, tell me what you're thinking now, and I can tell you all about your future. See, because unless something changes in you, what you're thinking is going to produce what you're thinking right now, today, is going to produce your future. Now, I think that science of mind is very clear to all of us in how we should proceed, that we have to rearrange our thoughts about yesterday and look confidently toward tomorrow. And what Ernest means, I believe, by rearrange our thoughts about yesterday is not to be dragging the past with us into the present and into the future, to just say, you know, 
Well, I had those experiences and they may not have been exactly what I wanted, but that's what I got. And now I'm going to move forward with a renewed faith and enthusiasm and a joy toward living. Right? You know, there's no way to make today happy, Ernest says, but to live as if it were an endless succession of your heart's desires. So just think about that. If your day was an endless succession of your heart's desire. I get up in the morning and there are people that I love and then I go to do my creative expression or work and it's something that I absolutely love and who am I working with but people that I love. You know, and on and on and on. See, that's how we contribute, that's how we use the creative power of mind, how we use the creative process, you know, to, to live our heart's desire right now. So I think a way to do that is ask, where is my heart most needed? Yeah, that's the question. Where is my heart most needed? Because where your heart is most needed is where it will be the most fulfilled. You know? See, we're following, I think, a natural law of life when we conceive of a greater possibility for our life. Because spirit, the infinite mind that's everywhere and within us, is always seeking a fuller and greater expression of itself. So how spirit gets to experience more love is by means of you and me. How spirit gets to experience being of service is by means of you and me. How spirit gets to experience a particular creative idea you have in mind is by means of you and me saying yes to that. You know, we're following a natural law of life when we can conceive of a greater possibility. And who among us cannot conceive of a greater possibility, of happier times, more prosperous times, more healthy times, more peaceful times? You know, we can all, we can all do that. You know, God is never frustrated or incomplete. I have to remind myself that almost every day, that God, the Spirit of God that is within you, within me, is never frustrated. It's never incomplete. God is always fulfilled. My job is to keep surrendering, to keep saying yes, to keep being open, to receive that greater good. People love to say, and I'm sure you've heard this, I have heard it forever, life is what you make it. Well, you know, in the science of mind, that's absolutely true. Life is what you make it. Why? Because the basic principle that Jesus taught is it's done unto you as you believe. Right? It's done unto you as you believe. So according to how you believe, that's how life is being done unto you. I mean, come on, that's what you're making it. We have to have the imagination to see the outcomes of our life, the health, the abundance, the loving relationship. We have to have the imagination to see those things as a complete fact and also the feeling that all the forces of life and nature are working to bring about our greater good. Life is for us. I absolutely believe that. Now, it's not like you and I have to make stuff happen. This is not about willpower or coercion or anything like that. Jesus said, it is not I, but the Father, Mother, God within that doeth the work. So there is something greater of which we are a part that works through us when we are open and willing and receptive and we say yes to it. You know, life is at the center of everything, waiting to be expressed, waiting to be spread out. You know, so science of mind has taught me we should live a life of fullness, a life where we are happy, where we feel successful, where we feel meaning and joy and well-being. I think that's pretty much what everybody wants. You know, life would not have put that desire within our hearts if it were not true, if it were not achievable. That would be a very unloving God that would give us a desire to express in a certain way, that would give us a desire to experience life in particular ways and then say, oh, no, but not for you. That's not a loving God. You know, God never lies to us. So if God gives us the desire, and I believe that desire comes from God, desire that is for greater life, greater love, and intentionally harms no one, that must be from God. So life is what we make it. If I want, like, to fix up my house, you know, if that's what I was going to do, I'm going to have to look at, take stock of everything and say, all right, what am I going to leave in and what's got to go? I mean, some things have absolutely got to go. So we could look at our mind like looking at our house that we want to fix up. 
is there something within me that must be replaced with something more desirable, some way of thinking, some tendency, maybe a habit I have, or some way of being, or somebody that whenever I talk to them, we go down that road that no good comes from. I want to replace the undesirable with what is more desirable. Suppose we're, um, Ernest says this, he says, suppose that we are surrounded by a creative and intelligent law which always tends to bring into our experience those things that occupy our thought, right? So what we focus on, the law of mind, is trying to bring into expression. So what God has given, you will have to take, but take. When I say take, the taking is through our faith and our imagination. When you do, the power responds to you according to, you, to your belief. It's done unto you as you believe. So when the will, when our human will and imagination are in conflict, it's almost always, always so that the imagination wins. Right? This is how powerful our imagination is. So in our teaching of the science of mind, we learn that we must mentally identify ourselves with our desires if we hope for their fulfillment. You know, it, I, I, you know sometimes I'm really slow uh, on this path, I guess. It took me a long time to learn. I mean, I, I really had to do years of work before I got that my heart is not something I have to hide from the world. In fact, my heart, your heart, is your gift to the world. Um, but there are thoughts that I have to remove if I tell the truth. Thoughts that are contrary, thoughts that are working against me, thoughts that are limiting me, thoughts that are holding me small, thoughts that are just an old way of thinking that don't serve me anymore. So here, let me give you a very concrete example. Um, we've had big changes in our country in the last week. And now, I don't want to know what your politics is. Really, I don't want to know. So don't email me. Don't send me a note. Don't want to know who you voted for. It's none of my business. It's your business. It's between you and the God of your being. But here's something that I learned when I was young. I, would, um, I had an aunt, uh, 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 an elderly aunt, and I would sometimes go on Sundays and have Sunday dinner with her because she lived by herself. And so I would ride my bicycle over to her house on Sunday afternoon, and she and I, we'd, we'd have our Sunday dinner together, and then we'd usually watch um, some old, old movie. And, uh, and then I'd get on my bike and I'd go home. So that was, that was just something I would do. But I remember one day, we're sitting at the dining table, and uh, this was my, my Aunt Helen, and Aunt Helen had in the dining room plates of uh, presidents on the wall. And uh, there were, uh, oh, I don't know, maybe four or five, six plates. I don't remember exactly. And I remember looking at these, and I had seen these for years. And every four years, a new plate would go up on the wall. And I remember saying to her, Aunt Helen, why do you have plates with the presidents on the wall? And she would say, why, that's a reminder for all of us to pray for them. She'd say, you know, it's our duty. We're Americans, but also we go to church. And because we go to church, it is our duty to pray for our leaders. Now, as a child, this made absolute sense to me because she didn't say we pray for them because we like them or we agree with them or we don't pray for them because we don't like them or don't agree with them or we pray for them because we don't like them or we don't pray for them because we do like them. You know, it was none of that. It was just there are leaders and it's our duty to pray for them. So that had an impact on me, and, and, and I think part of that was because, you know, back in the old days, we used to, they used to teach civics in school and, you know, all that stuff, and, um, and that really did impact me. And so, you know, speed ahead years, years ago, years, years later, here I am in the science of mind, and I think, wow, this, it's even more clear to me now that my job absolutely is to pray for those who lead us every day. But here's how I'm, now, when I say pray for somebody, do not hear that means I agree with them or I disagree with them. I like them, I dislike them. It's none of that. I'm praying for them because they are an expression of God 
and they are in a place of leadership in our country. So my prayer is to know that God is working through them for the highest and greatest good of everyone. And the way I say that is infinite intelligence is now working through. Divine wisdom is now working through this person. Love and compassion are now working through this person. See, I don't have to get in all the drama about my opinion about somebody or my not opinion about them. That's nonsense. That's what we do to keep ourselves small and hold ourselves back. All that petty nonsense. So, you know, as an American and as somebody who, yeah, I've been on a spiritual path for a long time. Why would I not lend my consciousness to one of the most important things that's going to happen in my lifetime? Why would any of us not lend our consciousness to that? When I was a kid, my mother used to always say at dinner, I don't want any talking about politics or religion. You know, so there was a lot of talk about the weather, which was pretty uninspired. And then as we got older, though, We'd say, okay, everybody gets it. Mom doesn't want us to talk about religion or politics. So mom, tell us, what can we talk about? You know, she said, well, you can talk about whatever you want. Just don't talk about religion or politics. And of course, what we wanted to talk about was religion or politics because it was interesting. That's what was interesting. So I think it's still interesting today. I, I had a very dear friend who passed a few years back, and she would always say to me, I never remember unpleasant things. And I watched her for a number of years to see if that was true, because that was such an outlandish statement to me. I never remember unpleasant things. And you know, over a period of time, I came to realize she really didn't. She did not hang on to the negative unpleasantries of the past. She acknowledged them, did what she did, needed to do to move forward, and she did just that. And I thought, my God, she's been gone for years, and she's still, still teaching me. You know, our experiences in life are stepping stones to something better because, you know, experience is what you get when you don't get what you want, right? Oh, when you don't get what you want, oh, I got experience. That's what I got. See, but the thing is, we learn from the past, but we don't have to drag it around with us. We just keep the wisdom and let the rest, let the story, all that baggage, we let that go. To the degree we hold nothing against anyone, including ourselves, to that degree, life will not hold anything against us. You know, we all remember, I think, I think people just remember too much that's unpleasant. I will tell you a, a personal thing. My mother went in, uh, many of you remember, my mother went into memory care um, over a year ago. And um, just before going into memory care, I would say my mother had a lot of fight in her. It was getting real feisty there, and it was getting really interesting. And then an interesting thing happened. She went into the home, and all her needs were met. She was safe. Uh, she immediately had friends. She was cared for. And all of that just went out of her. All of the fight just sort of went away, which I felt was, was, was kind of a blessing. Um, and so how that actually outpictured was sort of all the stuff that my mother used to complain about. There was no more complaint. All of the things that had made her unhappy, she didn't have those anymore. They were just gone. And it was like, wow, isn't that interesting? Now imagine your life. Imagine your life if everything you complain about was just dealt with. It was just handled. If there were nothing that was nagging at you and no unfinished business, what if we didn't remember anything unpleasant? So I want us to not hold anything against anyone, including ourselves. I want us, as people on the spiritual path, every day, whether you like them or not, to pray for our leadership. And the way, like I said, the way I do that is I praise 
our leaders, I raise our leaders in the name of infinite intelligence. I praise our leaders, I raise our leaders in the name of infinite intelligence. I praise our leaders, I raise our leaders in the name of divine wisdom. I praise our leaders, I raise our leaders in the name of love and compassion. Because that's, that's what comes to me. Now you may come up with something different, but I think if all of us, all of us gave a little bit of our attention every day to this, it could make a huge, huge, it, not only could it, it would make a huge, huge difference. I think we all want to view the future in the light of a new hope, you know, in the quiet, positive determination of a new and greater faith. You know, I, I always learned uh, in the seminary that if you love something, it changes, you know, and it changes for good. And so if we love something, and it changes in the light of our love. Imagine, imagine what we are capable of if we all agreed to put that energy of love out there into our world. I think we can make it through anything as long as we do it together. So I, I heard a little, um, an old, old tape from Ernest Holmes' radio show. And, uh, and he ended with this. He said, before we go to bed at night, we should say, Today is done. I bless it and let it go. I rest in peace, I wake in joy, and I live in the expectation of happiness, health, and abundance. Let's pray. So we turn our attention inward now, recognizing right here God is fully present. We are surrounded, we are filled with an infinite loving intelligent spirit. It's the most true, most real thing about us. We are emanations of the Most High God that God within us is the truth about each and every one. So not only do I affirm that we are connected with God, I further know that we are all connected with each other on the unseen side of life, that there's only one and we're all it. So in this awareness, I speak the word for each and every one of us knowing that our hearts and minds are open. And that yes, in fact, we lead with our heart because only good comes from that. I know that whatever is water under the bridge, we let it go. The past is not here now, it can't touch us, and we don't stress or worry or fret about the future. In this very present moment, we practice the presence of God. We know that God is right here and all is well, just in this moment right now. God is now here, all is well. And so we include in our prayer our family members and friends, all of our loved ones, those we hold near and dear, and we see them in our mind's eye. We surround them with the light of love. We know that God's healing presence uplifts and sustains each and every one. We let our prayer be a blessing in the world around us. So all that looks discordant, we claim the truth of God's harmony and peace and abundance. We bless our church, we bless all churches everywhere, synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God. And I know we're blessed by being together in consciousness today and because it is our duty as people on a spiritual path, as Americans. I praise our president, I raise our president in the name of infinite intelligence. I praise our president, I raise our president in the name of divine wisdom. I praise our president, I raise our president in the name of love and compassion. And so for all of us, I accept this truth. I know we are blessed, we are healed, we are raised up. And so with a grateful heart, I say, thank you, God, I release this word. And so it is, together we all say, amen. All right, we'll sing one time together. I am so blessed, I am so blessed, I am so grateful. For all that I have, I am so blessed, I am so blessed, I am so grateful, I am so blessed. All right, I invite you to hold your gift over your heart and we'll say our statement of giving together. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you very much. I am 
am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful for all that I have. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful. I am so blessed. I wish when I praised and raised, I could sound like that. <laughs> you can get Margaret's music at her website, margaretowens.com. So we can get more of that inspiration, have it there at home with you. <laughs> so uh, a few announcements. Um, a reminder that you can continue to make donations. If you want, you can call in after service over the phone, uh, give your donation via credit or debit card, and the phone number is 818-762-7566. You can also go to our website, nhcrs.org, and then forward slash give, and that takes you straight to our donation page. Or you can text the word give to area code 818-457-3419. However you're sending those donations, just thank you, thank you, thank you. Prayer with the Practitioner is available after service on Zoom. So just ask your Zoom host to hook you up with one of the practitioners who will be available for prayer. You'll be put in a private breakout room uh, for that session. Our, uh, you can also email prayer requests to us to prayer at nhcrs.org or call into the office 
and option four on the phone menu allows you to leave a voicemail and we check those voicemails and emails every evening and send the requests out to our practitioners. So we always want to assure you can always be supported in prayer here. Coming up this Wednesday, our Wednesday evening service, same Zoom link uh, and on Facebook Live. Meditation before service starts at 6.50 p.m. Service is at 7. And my topic this week is do no harm. But don't wait till Wednesday to follow that rule, okay? <laughs> Journey of the Heart Pledge uh, 2021 campaign. Thank you so much to all of you who have filled out your pledge forms. Uh, if you're still wanting to do that, just go to our website, nhcrs.org forward slash journey, and you can find the pledge form there, fill it out and um, submit it to us. Thank you for helping us to make 2021 the best year ever. We want you to uh, save the date, please, for our annual meeting, which will be on February 21st. That's a Sunday, 11 a.m., right after service. It'll be on Zoom only. So we'll be reminding you about that, but just wanted to give you a heads up. Also, please know that our grief support group, uh, led by our wonderful practitioner, Carol Winokur, will be meeting today on Zoom at 1 p.m. All are welcome. Uh, you can get the link off our website. And uh, speaking of grief support, we are asking that our congregation please hold Rebecca Graves and Scott Vance's family in prayer. Uh, Scott made his transition last uh, Sunday. And so it's a big loss to all of us here on the uh, practitioner corps. Really loved him as a practitioner here. And so please just lend your consciousness to supporting the family and loved ones. Our Zoom virtual patio uh, will be meeting um, before and after our Sunday and Wednesday services. So just to stay connected with your congregation, get on 20 minutes before or stay on after the service and you can visit still and have that sense of community. Our men's group meets every Sunday from 11 to 11.30 a.m. All men are welcome. And our Zoom meditation meets Monday through Saturday from 8 to 8.15 a.m. And links for all of those events are on our website. So again, nhcrs.org to get to any of the events or to sign up for our weekly e blasts or monthly newsletters. And with that, thank you once again for being with us this morning. Let's join in singing the peace song. My life is anchored in truth. 
My life is anchored in truth. I can never be separate. I can never be separate. I live in the consciousness of peace. I live in the consciousness of peace. I release all fear. I release all fear. I am living love. I am living love. Amen. Amen. Thank you.